Welcome back to our final podcast on chipsets on the motherboard. Ready for this final discussion? I have Will Byers, Alan High, Mike Steffen. Will, can you kick us off by talking about the CPLD? Um, so a CPLD or a, um, a complex programmable logic device, um, if you're familiar with FPGAs, it's basically a little bit smaller FPGA. Um, the whole purpose of them is to be programmable logic. So I, if I want it to do one fun- function, I can program it to do that. If I want it to do, it, to do another, um, I can change my code and have it do that now. Um, and what that gets you as a manufacturer is I can have a single chip that can do a wide variety of different things. So um, depending on which board I'm using it on, depending on what I want it to do, um, that functionality can vary greatly, really. So I think in our example here, it, on, it's on the SFP, or sorry, SGPIO, which is serial GPIO. Um, so it's kind of a GPIO controller. Um, and the, the purpose of the, the, the mini FPGA in this case is to do basically one function to do it very quickly and very efficiently. Yeah, or, or it's doing functionality that kind of like the uh, PCH where they don't want to do it in the right. processor itself. So, so you can offload You don't that. waste processing. Mm-hmm. You, this, this is a dedicated device, not an ASIC, but essentially yep. a, kind of a mini FPGA mm-hmm. um, that we're, you know, we're basically, it's a... Um, CPLD, um, yeah. but but it's in, in essence it's doing some very specific things and it's doing it very efficiently. Yep, and you know, and like I mentioned, it very it can vary board to board. So, you know, it could be doing GPIO on one. It could be a if you wanted it to and had enough resources on the chip, it could be a small NIC for something okay. else. Mm-hmm. Um, it really just depends on what the manufacturer has chosen to do with it. Okay, D- does that allow you to reduce like the pin count? It could, yeah. Hmm. All right. What about power management? That's another feature that's now on these boards that is, is um, you know, it's something that they have to deal with. Um, and we're even seeing some trends where um, you're basically getting 12 volt in and you have to generate um, 3, 3, uh, uh, 12, uh, or I'm sorry, 12 stand, or 5 volt standby and then <laughs> Um, negative 12 if that should be used. The power management is probably the um, highest components count in terms of silicon on the board. Um, there's probably more power management than, than most other things. Probably not the largest in, in terms of size. Uh, of course, those would be the CPUs. Um, but the, the, the number of components associated with, uh, with power management for these parts is, is pretty huge. Um, so usually the, the, with, with any power, uh, you, you can assume that uh, you're going to uh, burn some watts. So um, again, as Alan said, where you're looking for the heat sinks, uh, where you're going to be learning, losing some power. So uh, for modern CPU platforms on modern uh, motherboards of this size uh, and shape, you tend to see uh, a bank of power management at each CPU. Um, that's the, underneath these fins um, would be the uh, the switching MOSFETs for the uh, so, power okay. Plus. So those are those are MOSFETs. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you'd have and you have uh, so this here constitutes an entire switching power supply. The FETs and the and these inductors here, uh, and there's usually uh, a small controller chip that's back here. You can't see it, but um, so each one of these is is talking to the CPU. Um, CPU is communicating back with it to to uh, request a a, uh, a voltage, um, and it's trying to run as low a voltage as it can uh, for power for our savings uh, mm-hmm. reasons. Um, so they're they're communicating to to put out the you know, one volt that these CPUs need at 200 amps uh, that they're running on. Um, similarly, you'll see you'll see that scattered all over the board. Um, these ones are, are most likely for these memory banks here. Um, which have their own uh, independent voltage rails. I think it's a volt and a half now. Mm-hmm. Um, there'll be there'll be power management scattered down here for the um, uh, for the PCH for the peripherals. There'll, they may, in some cases, be some uh, for specific peripherals like the NIC or the BMC. Um, so, like I said, it's by by far it's it's the uh, 
the the most repeated and most common chunk um, of non-specific silicon that you'll find on a board like this. Hmm. Very good. Thanks. Thanks for the uh, summary, Mike. Um, you know, I, um, so be assured, you know, rest assured that this is a complicated system, mm -hmm. right? And so um, it, it is a modern, modern marvel that we think, mm -hmm. you know, that, 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 that they exist. So it's really amazing. Um, I guess I've got kind of a, maybe a follow-up question before we close things out. And we'll just kind of go around. But I um, kind of wanted to ask you guys, where do you see these, this technology going? And what do you think is going to be the next step? You know the next thing um, that that we're going to see in motherboard development. Uh, maybe we'll start with with Will because um, yeah, I think awesome. he's probably going to talk about maybe some FPGAs. Yeah, I mean that would definitely be one area for sure. I think we'll probably start to see a lot more, if not ASIC inclusion on motherboards, a lot more of the programmable logic. Um, we'll we'll see because. Because the whole thing is, right, it's easier to, or quicker to develop a programmable logic solution than it is an ASIC, because there's just a lot more development time associated with an ASIC, like the CPUs. Mm -hmm. um, What's that ASIC, or that's, that FPGA going to be doing? Do I don't know. I mean, like we said earlier, right, it can be whatever the manufacturer wants it to mm -hmm. be. So um, I think initially we would see a lot more probably security features until they get yeah. pulled into the actual processor. Um, I would I wouldn't be surprised if they started pulling um, integrating the different chips into that one chip. So for example, the the BMC, the PCH, pulling those mm -hmm. into one one die almost like they did with the CPUs. So right? sort of a shrinkage, a yeah. consolidation and yeah. integration um, shrinkage. Yeah. yeah, I I wouldn't be surprised yeah. if that happened. Okay. Mike, how about you? What do you think? Um with the with every generation's uh, jump in PCI Express speed, um, I'm 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 interested to see where the next generations lie in terms of uh, the scale of PCI Express device that's available. Um, the the speed is increasing so fast that uh, uh, it may end up eclipsing memory at some point um, in terms of raw bandwidth uh, to and from the slots. So uh, that's going to enable. Uh, New new things, new add-on accelerator cards and things that are that are going to uh, change the way that that uh, or change where the processing is done on the board. And we're seeing that a little bit with uh, with GPUs, and we're seeing it between GPUs, uh, for instance, with uh, NVIDIA's NVLink. Um, but as the interface itself inside the board starts to get faster, you may uh, uh, enable new technologies uh, between cards or between the CPU and cards um, that that change. Where, where the the computing is being done, uh, maybe on the fly. So, so, do you think there might be solid competition between like memory, memory and PCIe for that volatile memory um, slot? I guess it's coming. It's, it's coming. It's, yeah, um, yeah. C CXL as a as a standard yep. uh, to, to to augment PCIe. Um, it's uh, it's interesting where that's that's looking okay. to go. Right, Alan, and and I'm gonna cheat and say it's basically these two guys' answers <laughs> put together, uh, because really, I, I mean, I, I, I on the I've seen some of the new roadmaps and stuff too, so I'm cheating a little bit there as well. But um, I think we're gonna see continued consolidation of CPUs, i.e., more and more functions that were on this board now being moved to the CPU. I think that there are definitely going to be more specialized features, say for the multimedia acceleration or crypto features um, that will be very specialized on the CPU that it will be able to accelerate. But in combination, they're also going to have these like huge registers and stuff to be able to do some of the like uh, AI like features, the the uh, super parallel features that you see more in GPUs. I think those are going to be more on the CPUs as we move forward as well. Um, but then, like Mike said, um, I think we're going to see more and more a as the buses increase in speed. You're going to see more and more ability to like add a memory module to your PCI Express slot instead of adding a regular memory slot here. And then your GPU would be able to access that memory as well uh, coherently. So um, basically just more consolidation, I feel like. Huh. 
a great discussion. You know, this is clearly this is um, bleeding edge technology, and it's it's uh, it's kind of exciting to be involved in this kind of technology. Mm-hmm. And um, and so I thank you guys for spending some time with us Absolutely. and uh, having discussion on the podcast about um, what's on these motherboards mm-hmm. and how it works. And so. Uh, for you out there, uh, I hope this was um, this was helpful, and I hope you enjoyed this. If you do, uh, if you did, uh, please uh, uh, email us or uh, respond uh, on our website, uh, crystalrugged.com. Thank you very much.